Let's discuss chiller recovery procedures. This is really going to be focused around centrifugals in particular, but the same principles can also be applied to air cooled as well. Anyway, this question comes from Shane. He asked a question that uh, him and his team are getting ready to do some centrifugal recoveries and was wondering if, uh, you know, what was the recommended practice on that. So this is uh, my recommendations, this is my procedures, and uh, what I do know of the, uh, of the processes that we do, we do in a practice. As you see on the note here, there is an extremely critical thing to be aware of going into this is at no point do you ever leave standing water just resting inside of the tubes during a recovery or a charge procedure. You always want to make sure that water is either flowing or it has been drained out entirely. A lot of people do drain them. I personally practice just flowing the refrigerant through the tubes. The reason for that is, is strictly for adding heat to the refrigerant. So as you recover, you know, you, you, you have to boil the refrigerant off and the vapor. And just if you flow water through the tubes during the recovery process, it helps the refrigerant to, to boil easier, which keeps your pressures higher, which keeps your compression ratios lower, which increases your flow volumes. So just something to be aware of. This is extremely important. This is the first recovery setup. All your centrifugals especially, you always want to recover from the lowest point on the system. Majority of the time, the, the lowest barrel that you can recover from will have some uh, port on the bottom specifically for recovery. These trains, for example, on the back side of the evaporator, there is a half inch line sticking out that you can hook a hose up to to get a really fast recovery a lot of times it may even have like a ball valve or something on it you can open up you want to hook to that port that's going to come from the chiller into the liquid port of the recovery cylinder out of the vapor port you're going to hook up another line to come over to the uh, recovery machine now you do want to have a scale on this particular tank and you want to monitor the weight of this tank until you reach whatever the capacity is of that tank. There are a lot of people that will put sight glasses in on the vapor side of the tank so that whenever they start to see vapor coming out, they know they've filled the tank to the maximum level. You wanna be very careful doing that because you know you, you are filling the tank 100% full of liquid at that point. I personally don't practice that. I, I'd base it off of the, uh, the weight of the tank. And so once I hit that, that weight then we stop and we move on to a new tank anyway pulling the vapor off the tank we then send it through the recovery machine out and into a uh, a sub cooler at that point to, to cool some of that vapor down and then you can push it into the uh, vapor holding tank at that point vast majority of the time you know you may fill you know five six seven of these liquid tanks and you may only have one vapor tank you use for the entire duration of the recovery uh only sometimes have i had it to where we've had to use two vapor tanks but mo usually almost all the refrigerant will get collected here and this tank won't even be full most of the time this is one procedure another procedure would be it's the same setup you're always going to be recovering from the same place but this is a push pull method now with pu push pull you're pulling from the chiller going into the, the liquid port on the tank. You're coming out of the vapor port back to the recovery machine. So it's the same so far, except instead of going to a sub cooler and another tank, instead you're going to come out the discharge line and put the vapor back into the machine. You'll do this continually until you get all of the liquid out of the machine that you can get. Once you've gotten all the liquid, your, your, your last step is to finish off the recovery by hitting, by going directly through the recovery machine just straight to a tank to collect all the vapor. So at this point you have nothing but vapor left in the system. We still process through a subcooler and then collect all the vapor in that tank from there. So that would be, that's a kind of a, it's a two-step procedure whenever you do a push-pull method. The charging procedure on all of these is basically the reverse of this. So if you're wondering about, you know, how do you charge it, just basically reverse the hoses back the other way and you won't need the subcooler at that point in the process and you, you've pretty well achieved the reverse 
the, the charging procedure of the recovery procedure. Anyway, I can do a separate video on that at a later date. Uh, this one I'm going to mainly just stay focused on the recovery portion. And the third way of doing it is if you have a machine capable of processing straight liquid, just doing a straight uh, recovery from the, the, the chiller directly into the recovery machine through a sub cooler and straight into the tank. I do not recommend this method uh, personally. Uh, if it was, if you were down to strictly vapor, that's fine to just kind of try to finish it off. I mean, obviously we have to do that on the push pull, but trying to do this process on a centrifugal machine, given the volume you're trying to process, it is a lot to try to do. Uh, I do practice this on the air cooled quite a bit and I have really good results with it. But me personally, most of my centrifugal recoveries we have set up in this configuration. So we'll have a liquid collection tank, we'll pull the vapor, we'll push into a vapor tank. I've talked about it before and I am currently trying to work into some jobs to do some experimentation with the push pull and use that as a comparison to the other methods and you know using a sub cooler versus going straight push pull and and trying to eliminate a, a sub cooler altogether in terms of charging and recovery and things of that nature so i am still doing some experimentation there i haven't fully settled on that but this is the uh, process for doing uh, recoveries and these are the different steps you can take i hope this helps i hope this draws you some benefit if you want to support the channel there are links in the description one of the things i always will continue to say is we have to make the time mtt for our family we have to make that time like i, I constantly constantly bring it up but you're never going to have the time you're always going to have to make the time so please do so your family needs you you know, we're, we're in the heat of the, of the summer and things are just always crazy for us, but we have to make it, please. As you can see as well, uh, I do try to take requests. I, some of the requests that I get are not so easy to make or it takes a lot more time. Something like this was pretty quick, simple. It's easy to shoot and set up. So I try to knock these out. Things are extremely busy for me right now. So I have slacked off on doing a lot of training videos because they do require a tremendous amount more work to put together, edit, and the whole nine yards. Most of the time, service calls type videos or vlogs are, are a lot easier to edit, and, and I just kind of shoot as I go. These training videos, I do have to make special time for. My point is, I do take requests. I have a list of requests that are currently up and I will try to do them as we go further into the winter. I will get back into doing more training content, but as of right now, things are just so crazy for me. I, I literally don't have the time to continue putting all those together and getting them edited and all that good stuff. For those who follow me for the training content, I really appreciate your patience. And for those who have who enjoy all my service call type work. I hope that you can find some benefit in the training side of, of this channel. It, it, this is something I try to do both sides of it. I want to help train and teach and help you grow at the same time. I also want to show you what it looks like out in the field. I want you to kind of go through that experience. Even though you may not be able to be there on site, at least you can benefit from seeing somebody else go through it and what it took to get whatever resolution was needed at that time. I really appreciate it, guys. Y'all have a good one.